uh, industrial efficiency but also employees efficiency and how the task and goal has designed to be achieved so basically ratio analysis considers historical data and thus analyzes the items whose actions will be taken in future so the historical data has to be analyzed its ticket its analysis and find out the sum amount of actions would be considered in the future thus as planning helps decide future course of action ratio analysis helps the management to a larger extent in planning a certain activity for achieving a future objective so whatever the objectives has been designed that objectives has been fulfilled through their plans and through their activities for an example if the return of a particular unit is lower as observed since years ago by calculating a return on investments roi the firm in that case should try to plan the investments in such a way that it would be lead to increase in return in the coming years that means either they have to understand their investment structure to revise and find out the how what are the drawbacks of their investment concern and in case of there would be some drawbacks or some loopholes or some part of weaknesses in in the case of a mean of profitability then we need to identify of that and manage both the things and try to improve of your profitability meaning to the next point that is managerial tool this is a managerial tool why it's a managerial tool ultimately it's an analysis who is going to analyze managers are going to analyze managers will need to identify what are the benefits what are the drawbacks how it would be improvisations what are the loopholes of that of the company and on that basis they will design their plan their goal their achievement targets and apply this so that is why this is a managerial tool it is an efficient tool which is frequently used by the managers and that is why it is a managerial tool fine for various functional areas the ratio analysis it would be a more more usefulness the ratios are useful in almost way every activity that a business undertakes so whatever the activities are done by the business all the activities has been scanned or has been passed through the ratios so ratio analysis is useful in financial management and production management accounting purchasing and everywhere so that means starts from the business start to find out the managerial aspects from business starts to managerial aspects everywhere this ratio tool will be used again it is also used for planning organizing controlling operations of an enterprise efficiently and effectively this tool would be helpful so managerial tool is actually find out in all the larger scale for the improvisations and benefits of the company moving to the next topic that is limitations of ratio analysis there are certain limitations the limitations if the data is not available properly if the informations which are passed out not perfectly then the ratio have some limitations because of it would be find out on the basis of the informations ratios by themselves mean nothing it means they are actually telling nothing so they must be always be compared with a norm or a target so that means whatever the target is there whatever the norms has been designed it would be work in that basis previous ratios in order to assess trends so the ratios which are actually already find out current ratios are giving us some information and it shows your trends the ratios achieved in other comparable companies also that means inter company comparisons is also possible in the ratio analysis why performing one of the above comparisons that means maybe a norm maybe a target maybe a trend analysis maybe a inter company comparisons it shows a causes has to be exercised so that means the ratio analysis is actually find out in that comparative analysis but the limitations are the first and the foremost limitation of ratio analysis that it depends on past or historical data 
which I already mentioned earlier, which it itself serves as a limiting factor. That means the data which are given by the accounting information, if it is incorrect, if it is not perfect, if it is biased, then the outcome out of it is also wrong. The analysis of the financial statement made from the data may not present the correct picture of the business. It happens sometimes. Uh, the, whatever the data has been actually derived from the financial statements and analyze that it may not be showing your correct picture it means that there are certain limitations of the particular financial information maybe uh, due to certain reasons if the financial data or a financial statement is not in a normal consideration or in a normal position the whatever the outcome has been de uh, derived from it it may not be right only accounting information is used while analyzing and interpreting the results of a ratio analysis. That means the accounting information is only the source of analyzing and interpreting the data. In taking corrective actions, management might concentrate more on improvising the ratio over the years rather than solving the major reasons behind such adverse conditions. So the limitation, it is not in the part of finding the ratios, but limitations may be after the interpretation, after the ratio has been uh, derived or find out, then whatever the interpretation has been done, that is maybe having some limitations. That means you already find out some reasons, you already find out the concrete information from it, you analyze the things, you find out outcome also from it and that outcome is to be applied to solve that drawback, solve that problems. Instead of that, we are not doing that, we are just trying to consider the amount of restricted and stop that particular situation. At times when the two items are compared, it is not necessary that the comparison will lead to the changes in the output of the items in questions. That means whatever the questions, whatever the task you have and because of that question and task if you compare two variables and two data, it may not be helpful to change immediately of that particular steps. There could be other reasons as well which can lead to the adverse situation. So this is all about a limitations of a ratio analysis. Moving to the next topic that is accounting ratio. What is accounting ratio? Accounting is all about the information which are prescribed recorded in the financial statements and the financial statement has been delivered the certain accounting information. That accounting information has been changed in a different format for comparisons of analysis. Accounting ratios are calculated by taking data from the financial statement. On the basis of financial statement, accounting ratios are classified in three different situations or three important parts. One, that is income statement ratios. That means the state income statement ratio means the ratios which are actually derived from only income statements. Maybe a trading account, maybe a profit and loss account or profit and loss appropriation account. Another one is a balance it ratio. That means the whatever the variables are taken only from the balance set. So that is called the balance set ratio. And composite ratio means the amount of information and variables has been taken from both the different statements, income statement as well as the balance statement and compared that is a composite ratio. A ratio of two variables from income statement is known as income ratio that I already mentioned and it is according to that part of the balance set ratio. Example, suppose if I want to find out the gross profit ratio. The gross profit ratio is required to information, two variables. One is a gross profit and the second is sales. Both these informations are to be taken from the trading account. So here the gross profit and sales compared and find out the outcomes. That is why it is considered a revenue statement ratio or an income statement ratio. Why? Because of the both the informations are taken from income statements. Suppose if I am going to take both the information from the balance set. Um, for that, if I am going to compare the current ratio, the current ratios formula is current assets divided by current liabilities. Current assets is generally recorded in the balance sets 
asset side and current liabilities recorded in the balance sheet liability side so all both this information both these variables are recorded in balance sheet and compared so that is why it's considered a balance sheet ratio another is a composite ratio the last is composite ratio here the variables are compared one is taken from income statement and the another is taken from the balance sheet and then compared that is why it is called composite ratio example that is return on equity shareholders fund ultimately return on equity shareholders fund has been compared with the total amount of shareholders fund which are actually taken from the balance sheet and compared with the net profit it actually derives from the profit and loss account and PL appropriation account and compared that is why it's called a composite ratio moving to the next point that is the classification of accounting ratio here it classified in two broader way one is a traditional classification and the another way it's a functional classification traditional classification is actually considered on the basis of the statement analysis the functional classification is actually analysis on the basis of the information analysis so it is broadly divided into a four parts one is profitability ratio second is turnover ratio third is liquidity ratio and the fourth is ownership ratio let's begin with the first solvency ratio that is ownership ratio ultimately this ratio is reflected showing the position of the business what amount of capital structure is carried by the business how much capital has been owned by the owners how much capital is borrowed from the different different sources and what is actually the comparison of this ratio so that means the solvency has to be determined by the company that the company whether having enough amount of ownership capital to meet and pay all the dates or all the liabilities at the reasonable period of time to their third party solvency of a business is determined by its ability to meet its contractual obligations towards stakeholders particularly towards external stakeholders because of ownership capital it's actually belongs by the owners of the owners of the business but the external stakeholders like the creditors bankers financial institutions who are actually giving the fund or lending the fund in your business for a stipulated time or for a particular time against their interest so that's why that interest is actually how much frequently and how much regularly you pay their debts that would be derived from the solvency ratio here the solvency positions are known as a solvency ratios for instance which type of ratios to be find out for the solvency ratio one may be a proprietary ratio debt equity ratio capital gearing ratio fixed capital and fixed assets return ratio moving to the next ratio that is the liquidity analysis or a liquidity ratio liquidity analysis and liquidity ratio is actually identified and showing a liquidity of the business it's directly affected to the your working capital position that means the company whether have an enough amount of working capital to run business very smoothly or not that is to be determined through the various part of ratios here this ratio is also uh, actually concerned internal as well as an external here the ability of the business to pay the amount due to the stakeholders specifically external stakeholders as and when in it is due is known as a liquidity ratio that means the sum amount of liabilities is actually met frequently day to day basis regular basis which uh, liabilities has to be paid frequently and regularly on the basis of the certain requirements so whether you are able to pay these liabilities and uh, you are manage these liabilities which could be identified through the liquidity ratio liquidity ratio is actually calculated to analyze the liquidity positions in the business for an example current ratio shows the capacity of a firm to meet their current liability as and when 
the mature so whenever the current liability is mature whether the company have enough amount of current assets to meet all this current liabilities so this is a ratio current ratio liquidity ratio asset test ratio these are the ratios is actually example of a liquidity ratio moving to the next point that is turnover analysis it is a done to throw light on efficiency of operations of a business based on effective utilization of resources that means you can say the part of operational efficiency can be determined through the turnover ratio whether the company have enough amount of efficiency whether the company is working in a, in a systematic efficiency that employees are actually cooperative and uh, uh, the amount of the amount of the informations which you determine there would be any uh, loopholes or leaking through turnover ratio it can be improvisation ratios calculated to analyze these are known as uh, activity ratio also so that means turnover ratio has another name that is activity ratio also like a debtor ratio creditor ratio turnover ratio uh, assets turnover ratio capital turnover ratio goods turnover ratio so these are an example that examples provide the informations for debtors informations creditors informations and this informations would be helpful to understand the how much times they are actually getting a credit period from their debtors and how much amount of credit has been offered by their creditors to us and from the comparisons they can manage their liquidity position also so ultimately it shows an of efficiency suppose if you manufacturing the goods and sales then how much time you are manufacturing the goods how much time the actually your raw material has been turned over and converted into a finished goods and again it converted into a cash so this actually rotations is find out an ability and efficiency of the whole overall organizations moving to the next point that is profitability analysis it is a profitability ratio this is a very very important ratio tool or functional classifications in the ratio analysis various type of ratios are available under this segment various type of ratios return on investments it's according to the dupont chart but on the basis of dupont chart the ratio of return on investments is a more major part of the particular uh, analysis of financial statement ultimately all the stakeholders whether internal external other all the investors and all the stakeholders have a main concern how much amount of profitability has been arrived from it and that is why the profitability ratio is very much important it refers to the analysis of profit in relation to sales or funds employed in the business and the ratio calculated to meet this objective are known as profitability ratio so that means if you want to compare the profitability on the basis of their sales then gross profit ratio net profit ratio operating expense ratio operating profit ratio divisible profit ratio these are the ratios are there but suppose if you want to compare the amount of capital employed or amount of investments made by the uh, investors in the form and what amount of profitability has been derived against their investment then return on equity shareholders fund return on uh, shareholders fund return on capital employed these are the ratios available to identified for the profitability on the basis of investment so all these ratios ultimately providing an informations of the profitability moving to the next part that is the classifications by users if you want to consider there are three main users one is management second is creditors and the third is shareholders stakeholders has been divided into three part management creditors and shareholders there may be other part also like government country and the social services other parts are also there are main three stakeholders who are actually the main users of this ratio on the basis of management operating ratios are very much important debtors and creditors turnover ratio is also very much important because of they are going to design a policy on the basis of this two ratio the how much credit period is given and how much credit period is offered stock turnover ratio so how many times actually the stock has been turnover in a year 
on the on that basis the profitability has been improved so this is actually a part of stock turnover ratio solvency ratio from the solvency ratio management may be identified that they have enough amount of capital to meet all the debts at that particular time return on capital because of ultimately the return on capital is a find out for management whatever the amount has been invested by the management and that amount of return is actually uh, concerned for the management next is creditors for creditors it's actually a current ratio solvency ratio fixed assets ratio and other ratios for the creditors is concerned for shareholders their yield what amount of yield has been determined from the shareholders proprietary ratio dividend payout ratio capital gearing ratio and return on capital fund so these are the ratios which provides an information for different different users so moving to the next point that is very much important the formulas of a ratio analysis there are several formulas for ratio analysis and which is actually divided into several parts let's begin with the profitability ratio in the part of a profitability ratio there are few uh, important formulas in context to the relation to sales and in the relation to investments so that means the uh, profitability formulas has been divided into two parts the concern with that the first is in the relation with sales so those are the comparisons of the sales as well as the profitability which come into the under this head and the another is in relation with investments so the amount of investments which you made by the company so under this category the comparisons of investments with the profitability which comes into this head so here under the relation with the sales there are a few formulas like gross profit ratio then the net profit ratio right operating uh, profit ratio then expense ratio correct and the part of the divisible profit ratio under the category of a relation with the investments there are three major important part of formula that is roc rosf and roesf in that case return on capital employed roc is the return on capital employed and the return on capital employed which concern the part of the comparisons of uh, amount of profitability ebit earning before interest and tax with the amount of a total amount of capital employed invested then the rosf is return on shareholders fund that means whatever the amount of uh, shareholders fund which will be comparative with the part of uh, amount of uh, the net profit that is net profit after tax and the amount of return on equity shareholders fund that would be compared with the amount of investments made by the equity shareholders with the investors amount of a divisible profit so this is what all about the part of the difference of the profitability ratio let's begin with the part of the first gross profit ratio gross profit ratio is ultimately a comparison of gross profit divided by sales into 100 as i mentioned in earlier part the ratio analysis can be determined in many format it can be determined in percentage it can be determined in a proportion in number of times so many ways the ratio uh, ratio can be determined here the ratio would be find out in a percentage and that's why it is multiplied by the 100 comparison of gross profit is gross profit and sales so here the company want to determine that the how much amount of a gross profit earns on the basis of sales the sales is considered net sales so how much amount of a net sales because of the net sales the amount of profitability has been earned by your company that's your first ratio now moving to the next is operating ratio 
in case of operating ratio this is a comparison of uh, operating expenses of the business with the net sales so here the formula for this is cost of goods sold plus operating expenses divided by sales into 100 again this would be find out in a format of 100 only so here the comparisons of what the sales is going to compare with the cost of goods sold and operating expense now here cost of goods sold can be determined with opening stock plus purchases 